Welcome back to Everything Whiskey. I'm Callum. And I'm Sam. And today we're having a look at the Kalila 12. Alright, today we're doing Kalila, Kalila 12. Um, this is. I always start off with this is one. No, no, no. This is one that we tried very, very long ago before we got it. It was like our first ever peated whiskey, wasn't it? Yeah. And I hated it. I and could not. I liked stand. it, but it was like very peaty to me. It was like bizarre. I don't know if I liked it just because it was like not enjoyable. You know how it's like, Jesus Christ, what the hell's in this bottle kind of thing? And I was like, wow, buy it. Um, but I'm assuming. Uh, try you and you and your dad again tried a little bit of it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah, and it wasn't as peaty as you remember. Um, no. Yeah. I, I mean, don't think so from what I know. I it's... mean, now I'm into Optimal, so yeah, exactly. you can't really get much peer. From right? what I understand, this is kind of like a less complex Lagavulin 16 in the way that it's um, not a punch in the face with Pete like an Ardbeg or Lafroig, but it's not also not got like the layers and complexity to the extent that um, Lagavulin 16 has. Um, so it kind of sits in that sweet peat uh, range. Yeah, so they've kind of got an interesting history because they're like one of the biggest um, distilleries in Isla. Mm. Um, and it, but like majority of their of the stuff they produce goes into blends, not to their own product. Um, yeah, and few, more recently, yeah. they've started like obviously this has been out for a while, but like they're putting out more stuff into their actual own brand label, mm. Bully the Whiskey Single Malt. Um, and they've really cemented themselves as like a really prominent, reliable, good Isla whiskey. Um, but it's just funny to see how, for such a large distillery, to see really it's how little availability there is for like more of their, like there's always this around, but for the other stuff you don't really I'm see it unless it's online. Enough, yeah. um, but it's just interesting. It's such a large distillery and you really don't see much of their stuff. Mm. That's because it's all going to other bottlings. Like I know, um, a lot of this goes into some of the Johnny blends and stuff lot, like yeah, that. A lot of blends you use. Clearly. A lot of it. Because um, it's, it's good. Because yeah. it's like a controllable peat. It's sweet peat. It's not just like you add a dash of Optimal and you screw up your entire batch. I love this nose. Nose is nice. The balance of the sweetness with the peat just seems to be perfect. It's almost like so well blended. It's like honey. Sugar maple bacon. You know maple bacon? Yeah. And like when you fry it, you get all the caramelized notes. It's, it really is kind of like an in-between of the other Islas because it's sweeter, but I'm also not getting all the brine of the Lafroig. Um, but I am but I am getting brine, but I'm also getting some, you know, the, some of those more savory, meaty notes, but not to the extent that you get with Ardbeg and stuff. So it's like, it is kind of sitting in that little Venn diagram spot. Oh. Ooh. That's sweet pea. The peat is more um, hidden it's by the sweetness. It's though. really sweet. Mm. It's, it's beautiful. But that is a lot is sweeter than I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, sweetness is at the forefront of this whiskey. Um, there's a bit of like light tropical fruit that I find. It's like, like kind of like that hard big drum, how there's some weird like yeah, pineapple. It's not banana or, or something. Or anything, but yeah, but it's, yeah, it's got some weird tropicaliness in it. I want to try it with the um, a lager born, but I don't want to do the 16. I feel like that's. Not a fair. I reckon the eight would be because the lager one's more like depth and yeah. Like I remember the eight being and a bit more young. Well, young, it's obviously younger because it's eight years old. But what do you think of? we've got enough close to finishing this one. I, I, they're all like their bottles are all so similar. Like you look at all the lager ones and stuff. Like their bottles are always so similar. They've got the folk glass. They've got the black like wrap is the exact same. The corks are the exact same. Like I don't know. It's just. I know, I probably don't care about that, it's just probably really interesting. <laughs> um, what's the ABV on this? 48. What's this? 40, I think. 43. Oh, Alright. Um, so they're reasonably close. Yeah, a bit higher on this one, but this has also had, it's been relatively empty for a, a little bit, so maybe it's lost some of it anyway. Alright, so we're comparing the live woolen to the Kalila. Yeah, we had a slight break if the camera's off, off kilter a little bit. Um, the battery died. Yeah. I need to get more batteries because it dies so damn quickly. Yeah, Lag 8 versus the Kulila. Um, any... Lag Woolen 8 is sweeter. Sweeter for me, really? on the nose. It's probably the glass though, because it's it's not in a glen can. It smells a bit brighter. Yeah. Like you can smell the four year difference in the age. Oh sorry, two, uh, two years is not that. It smells brighter though, it's four years. 
versus... Oh, 12, yeah, sorry. Yeah, four years, I knew. <laughs> I knew I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the, uh, it's the just year. The age. The year. <laughs> oh, let me taste it. I want to compare. Mm. They're actually very similar. I think that was a good pick. Um, this is brighter and less sweet. Mm. Like the if this is brighter and the edges aren't as rounded. Yep. This is like a bit sweeter, more rounded edges goes down a bit more. But this is higher ABV, so it might explain the brightness. It's still really tasty. I mean, um, <laughs> that's what, they look exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, that's what I said before. They look exactly the same. Um, out of here. I got an intense coffee note. Yeah, actually, the, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, more like of a dark, rounded kind of like. Yeah, sweet coffee. Yeah, sweet black coffee. Mm. Yeah, that's nice. I think that's a good um, comparison. I mean, the bottles look the same. <laughs> that's why it's a good. The yeah, spirit is the bottles. <laughs> the spirits are when, ever so when, when the, ever so slightly intense, <laughs> <laughs> like that. Ever so slightly different. Yeah. Um, Lager Bullet Eight is good for its own reasons. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a limited. Well, it was a special release. Now it's part of their. I think it's yeah, they, yeah. But. Um, it's just a weird age for a scotch. Eight years. Mm. Especially for Isla. A, yeah, Isla, like those bright notes are going to be more, yeah. more obvious. Uh, I like like one eight quite a bit, just especially because of the high ABV compared to the 16. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I think I prefer this one just because of the age. It makes it a little bit more rounded it's and a it's a bit well. darker. It, yeah. just, it just seems to be a little bit more mature in its flavors. Um, but 16, like, like when 16 still beats this, yeah. for me, there's more complexity. But it, it, that's what it is. It's in between Lago like 8 and Lago like 16. <laughs> We're trying to compare where it was sitting. It's, it's exactly, it's that's exactly in the middle between those two. It's made it, um, those bright notes came a little bit to the forefront. Yeah, it's less sweet on the nose. More kind of, yeah, bright. A bit more funky. Actually, kind of hurts to put your nose in there now as well. Really notice a massive difference in the taste. It's just very, it's quite sweet. That's the only thing. It's got more of like a like an Ardbeg drum impact. It's more fruity. I definitely prefer Clearer without the water added though. Yeah, me too. It makes it a bit too just as we said bright. It's just unnecessarily. Yeah. It doesn't drive up any oils for an intense, you know, like start. Like mm -hmm. you know when you normally it drives the oils up. And the first sip is intense, yeah. then the rest is a little, little bit more mellow. I didn't experience that this no. in this instance. It just kind of seemed a little bit more mellow, uh, and I don't think it needs that. I think it's perfectly fine yeah, at forty three percent, but still worth trying. Definitely. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Everything Whiskey. If you liked it, leave us a like. If you want to see future episodes from us, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you do, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.